<laughs> I told her, I told her when I saw her at the cash register that I was going to, it didn't matter if I was going to have to stand in line 20 minutes, I was going to do it just to question her. And so get there yesterday, I said, ah, where's it? I'm going to be in your line. She said, not unless you're going to be at self-checkout because that's what she was over and I'm not into self-checkout. <laughs> but it is good to see her here. In 1 Samuel chapter 13, and we're going to preach out of 15, Richard. I'm just giving a reference. <laughs> the Israelites never went into battle without the blessings of the Lord. Uh, this, these blessings included prayer and sacrifices, which could only be done by the spiritual leader, which was at that time Samuel. So here they are in front of lines and waiting on Samuel, and the Philistines are growing bolder and while the Israelites are growing discouraged and as each day passes their confidence gets lower and soon they start leaving. They were running off and Saul was quickly losing his army. Let me go ahead and say that. As I was reading that he was losing his army. Saul took matters in his own hands. He cited uh, uh, disobey God's commandments and offer sacrifices. And, in ver and I'm just going to read these two verses to you real quick. If you want to turn over there, you're welcome to. In verse 10 and 11, chapter 13. And it came to pass that as soon as they had made an end of their offering, and, uh, the offering, the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came to Saul Went out, uh, went out, and Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. And Samuel said, "What hast thou done?" And Saul said, "Because I saw the people were scattered from me, and that that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered together uh, at Mishmash. Therefore said I." The Philistines will come down now upon Gilgal, and I have not made supplications unto the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, and offered burnt offerings. And Samuel said unto Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandments of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue, and the Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord hath commanded him to, to be captain over the people, because thou hast not kept that which is the Lord's command, commanded thee. God is always looking for people with his heart, for their hearts for him. You know, we understand that David was the man after his own heart. And if you've read First and Second Samuel, you'll find out that uh, David got closer to God. Then he got away from God. I mean, don't we all do that at some time or another in our life? There'll be times that we'll be close to the God and, and we'll worship him for who he is. And there'll be times because sin has gotten our life, we can't worship him anymore. We get discouraged. And I... I've come to a conclusion that Samuel had rebuked Saul because God was displeased and Saul, uh, Saul took things out of his hands instead of waiting on God. I think we're guilty. We look for reasons to do things the way we want to instead of looking, looking the way God wants us to. Now, if you'll turn over to chapter 15, we'll read that real, real, real quick. Uh, <laughs> we'll start in verse 1, where the scripture says, Samuel said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now, therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that thou, that which Amalek did, is, uh, did to Israel, now he laid wait 
for him in the way when he came up on the, uh, from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they, they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them uh, in Talim. 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came into the city of Amalek and laid wait in the, uh, in the valley. And Saul said unto the uh, Canaanites, Go, depart, get down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For ye showed kin, uh, kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Canaanites departed from uh, among the Amalekites. And Saul smote the Amalekites from, and I'm sorry, I can't read that word. Huh? What was that name? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. What verse am I in? I looked up. Eleven. Seven. Okay. And Saul smote, uh, smote the Amalekites from, and I don't know what that word is. Okay. Until they come as to assure that is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people uh, spared Agag, Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatlings and of the lambs and all that is good and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile and refu uh, refused that they destroyed the, uh, utterly. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel saying, I repent. Repenteth me, it repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king. For he is turned back from the following me, from following me, had not performed my commandments, and has grieved, and it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, uh, Samuel rose uh, early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place and is gone about and passed on and gone down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou the Lord, I have performed the commandments of the Lord. And Samuel said, What is the meaning of the bleeding of the sheep in mine ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, they, and you need to underline that in your Bible, they have brought them to the, from the Malachites, and underline this thing, for the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen and sacrificed unto the Lord thy God, and the rest have, utter, uh, have utterly destroyed. And then Saul said unto, uh, Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee, what the Lord has said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou wast a little in thine own sight, was that not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners of Amalekites and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore, did, uh, then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst uh, fl uh, fly upon the spoils, and did evil in the sights of the Lord? And Samuel said unto, uh, I mean Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag the king of the Malachites, and have utterly destroyed the Malachites. But the people took of the spoils, sheep and oxen, and chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice 
unto the Lord thy, uh, thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hear than the fats of the ram. For rebellion is a, as the sin of, of witchcraft, stubbornness is iniquities and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being in your house again, Lord. And Father, I know that uh, you have guided me in this direction. And Lord, I pray, God, that you just take this message over. Use me as an instrument that we may be able to uh, uh, hear your word, God, and, and implant your words in our hearts and our minds, Father, and understand what, our, uh, what your desires is for us. Lord, I thank you for being here. I thank you for the services. Now, God, I pray that you'll just take control. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One of the things about... Uh, reading out of 1611, sometimes the words kind of throw me off because it doesn't spell all the words that uh, the way your uh, 1769 does all the time. But this is not a, a un, unheard of story of what had happened. But I want us to understand that there's some things that God has laid out for his children that he wants us to do. Every one of us has a Bible. Some of them may be King James versions, others may be different versions. But I'm going to tell you right now, God's word, is, that is like Paul said one time, let God's word be true and every man a liar. And what we need to understand is that when God uh, had t commanded Samuel to tell uh, Saul what he wanted him to do to the Malachites, it looked like he was going to take over and do what exactly what God wanted him to but instead of him doing it, he took control of it and he took the pleasure of keeping what God had cursed. Now, you know, everybody talks about uh, God destroying men, women, children, and sucklings and what have you. You know what? When God wants to destroy evil, he destroys it from the top down. You look over there in the Middle East right now, there's cousins over there that hate one another. And God, had, I think about when God dealt with the Philistines and stuff, he wanted them destroyed because they didn't stand for him and they didn't do what they wanted to, different sermon. But I want us to look at some things this morning. And in this first point I want us to look at, doing things partially right is still wrong. Yeah. Doing it partially right is still wrong. It's when we come to repentance and faith through Jesus Christ, that he forgives us of our sin. When we go through the motion of praying and saying, God, forgive me my sin, most often that is the only thing we say is, please forgive me of my sin, and, and, and then we go on about our business. How long does that prayer last in our life? Most of the time what happens is, is we'll pray that prayer, we think everything's okay, and we walk out the doors of the church, or if you prayed it at home, you walked out the door of your house and nothing has changed because that repentance is really not there. You know, repentance. I've, and over the last five or six weeks, I've preached in the order of us getting ready, prepared for revival. And I think God has got us well on our way to headed that way. But see, it still takes all of us to be in harmony one with another. It takes all of us to be in harmony with God to experience the revival that, that we really need. Turning our backs on God in any way is total rebellion toward Him. Total. We know that God cannot look up on sin. We know that. In fact, he couldn't look on it so, so much as he turned his back on Jesus when he was on the cross, not because his only begotten son wasn't his son, but it was because of sins, my sin, that was on Jesus when he was being crucified. If it had only been about me, Jesus still couldn't, I mean, God still couldn't, the Father couldn't have looked up on it. He hates sin. We love sin. In fact, America, and I'm going to pick on America, I know it's all over the world, 
America so much loves sin that we started calling sin right and God wrong. Let's just think about it. Just for a minute, what I'm finna say isn't going to, cha isn't going to be something you haven't heard. Now, we're telling everybody, you know, there was a little baby here. Who, who just had a child? That little baby was born. They, they, now hospitals won't even put on there they're male or female. They ain't old enough to figure out what they want to be. Now, listen, I can tell you, little boys that are toddlers, if they got sisters, guess what they do? They play with dolls. That boy over there did. In fact, we went from watching, playing with little girl dolls, they started making G.I. Joe replicas. Those were dolls. And they were played with. But it didn't make Chase any less a, a young man. Just because he did that. But now, it's every man for their own. What they want to do, how they want to. Saul was the same way. It's what he wanted to do. And I was looking at this morning... As I was studying that, I saw in this passage, and if you go to verse 15, you look in there, when Paul, Saul started talking about the people, when he said, they. Who's they? <laughs> My grandmother used to say they was the biggest liar that ever was. You know, when you wanted to go do something, your kids, you want, as a kid, you wanted to go do something. Me and Richard, 16 years old, wanted to go to the skating rink. It was 17 and a half before I ever got to go, and it was because of the DE party. But Richard and I wanted to go skating ring because we'd heard about it. We really didn't know much about it. And mother, we begged Mama, oh, there's nothing down there y'all need to go to. She wouldn't let us do it. But we obeyed our mother and we did what she wanted to do. And we thought it didn't matter how crazy we thought she was. <laughs> we still had to obey Mama. You know, we often want to do things, and I, there was a thought that I was going there, and my 61-year-old mind kicked it out before I could finish it, but I'll get to it because it'll come back around. Turn your backs on God is total rebellion toward God. All too often we mix sin with what God has done for us. All too often we never think of what will happen when we do, and God, God changed his mind on Saul, he expressed sincere regret and remorse about what he had done about allow allowing Saul to be king. I wonder if he has sincere regret for letting Joe Biden be president of the United States. You know, Joe Biden couldn't have got that if God didn't allow it. We could talk about all the fake ballots and all that kind of stuff. They proved that they know that was done for a fact. But see, God allowed it to happen. Why? Because we as Christians have turned our back on God and, and we're not doing things God's way. If we did it God's way, guess what? We would pray for God to send the man he wanted us to have as we worship him. And But instead, and I'll go ahead and say this, I don't know any man's heart, but Donald Trump prepare. Uh, Professed to be a Christian and he had one of the nastiest mouths I've ever heard as a president speaking. Now, was he a good president? I think so. But that'd be argumented by at least half of the United States. But I haven't seen us get better. God blessed us for four years. Well, he's blessed us longer than that, but I, I'm going back just the last... Four years. In four years, everything that Donald Trump set in, and he's not God, but everything he set in place was blessing America. People were going to work, and in eight months, it's been destroyed. Not because of Joe Biden, but because God has cursed America. Blessed who is a nation whose God is the Lord. And what we've done is we've made everything else God in our lives. We've turned our back on him. We've walked away from him. we justify our sin. What did, I, I told Becky this morning when I was coming here, I started looking at how Saul started blaming they being the biggest liar. He was blaming the people for what he did, not killing that king and not destroying it, utterly destroying the other stuff. He said they, verse 15, they have brought them 
from the Amalekites. Who is they? The people. He said, they did it, I didn't. Now, who's that talk about? Adam blamed God and Eve for the sin he had. The woman which thou gavest unto me. You know, it's not, we, we talk about the woman being beguiled. But Adam blamed her. It was like saying, God, if you'd have never given me this woman, it wouldn't have happened. It would have happened. And then you look at the rest of verse 15. For the people spared the best. Now, who was the leader of that crowd? Saul was. He didn't say, I did it. Who else did that? Aaron in the Old Testament said, they made me make an idol. They made me. Now, let me ask you something. Has anybody ever made you do something as an adult? I know kids, parents make them do stuff sometimes. Who makes you do anything you don't want to do? No, the devil don't do it. It's a choice. We choose what's right and wrong. Saul made a choice. He chose to rebel against God and do it his way. He had seen it. We had seen it in chapter 13. We see it in chapter 15. And God had gotten fed up with him. Of course, let me go ahead and tell you, God already had a plan. He knew Saul was not the man that he needed in that position. He wanted David. And he got David because he put David in his place. Now we need to remember David become a servant to Saul before he become a king. I've often wondered about that. And look at verse 16. Then Saul said unto, um, Samuel said unto Saul, I've been turning them around all day. Then Samuel said unto Saul, stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord has said to me this night. And he said it unto him, say on. Let me tell you something. Let's go back just a few verses. You notice how God came to Samuel and said, it repented me that I even allowed Saul to be king. Did you see what the next few next sentence underneath was? Samuel stayed up all night, broken hearted and crying unto the Lord. Let me tell you something. Sin in your life doesn't just affect you. Samuel and Saul were good friends. Samuel was okay with Saul being the king, but what did he do? He saw the king doing things he didn't need to do, and he had to obey God and correct him. But Samuel didn't make headway much with Saul. Saul was a, a headstrong man and he thought, listen, what we think is right doesn't always mean it is. God says your thoughts are not my thoughts and my thoughts are not yours. He don't think like us. We need to pray and ask God to give us direction in what we do. We need to pray and ask God to let us uh, be a... a an example to this world and represent him in everything. God, give me direction in how you want me to do this. How many times has Liberty Chapel Baptist Church, in my 12 years, looking back upon how many times in 12, in 12 years has, have I seen Liberty Chapel make decisions without God being in it? It's happened. I'm not going to go into details. But it's happened. And then when the gospel of Jesus Christ got started being taught, and I started praying earnestly and asking God, and I know Becky was too, because I needed help in this church. I said, God, send the people to Liberty Chapel that we need to help you be honored and glorified. And God started sending people in here. Let me tell you something. When God starts sending people in here to be a service to him, guess what's going to lead? People that don't want to serve him. Go ahead and blame Ronnie Mutina. I ain't standing under that preacher. Why? You said and listen to everything on TV that's being preached wrong. Why don't you look for something that's right? I'm not claiming to be the best preacher in the world. I've never claimed to be it. Won't ever, by the grace of God. But I'm going to tell you something. With a God's help, I'm always going to try to preach the truth of God's word. 
The truth shall make you free. But nobody wants no truth. Kind of like us fat boys. You, you like it when somebody says, man, it looks like you lost weight. You know what I tell them? No, I hadn't. What do you mean? I said, I lost weight a year and a half ago, but I've gained 30 pounds back. We like to be told lies to make us feel better about ourselves. See, Saul was telling a lie to make him feel, I believe, to make himself feel better about what he had done. All oh, the sheep and the oxen and everything, they kept, they kept the best because we want to make an offering to God. What does this mean to you? Well, let's go back to Genesis. I'm not trying to take John's lesson, over, but let's go back to Genesis for a minute. You remember when Cain killed Abel? Why did Cain kill Abel? Because Abel's sacrifice was honored and Cain's wasn't. What was Cain offering? He's offering something from the ground. What did God curse? The ground. So we're going all, and I know there is a blood offering thing in there, but I'm telling you, God had cursed the ground, told Adam, for the sweat of that brow, that brow you're going to till for the rest of your life, the rest of your days. So Cain decides to till, make a garden, and he offers it to God, and God rejected it. Why did God reject it? One, it wasn't a blood sacrifice. Two, it was something that had been cursed by God. So I'm going to go, now, let's go back here now. God had cursed the Malachites. He told them he wanted not only them killed, but he wanted them utterly destroyed. And I think in that case, he talked about burning the bodies and all that kind of stuff. He didn't want just the people killed. He wanted everything they owned taken care of. Everything. So Saul decided, you know what? Let's keep the best of the sheep and the oxen. We'll offer that as a sacrifice. You know what? Too, all too many times in our lives we offer to God as a sacrifice in our life what he is cursed in God's word. Too many times we offer up a sinful life to praise God's life, praise God for who he is, but we don't want to repent. We're just like these men here. Adam, Saul, there's more in there. But verse 21, let's look at it. But the people took of the spoils. Saul's saying, I didn't do it. The people did it. That's like Liberty Chapel Baptist Church, like the pastor of Liberty Chapel Baptist Church saying, I didn't do it. The church did it. Well, the church is the one who's got authority. But guess who's, who the leader of the church is? I'm the under shepherd of Jesus Christ. He put me as a leader over here. So can I pass the buck to y'all? Sure I can. Am I right when I do it? Not every time. In fact, I'll tell you right now, if a church makes a decision that goes against God's word, it's up to me to rebuke you for it. And if y'all won't want to change, then it's up to me to step down and walk out. Don't want to do that. But if I'm following God and his direction, then I have to do what his word says. Don't I? It's just, oh, is God's word only applicable to a pastor? Or a preacher. We talk about studying to show ourselves approved unto God. Don't you just love it when you tell somebody what someone where's that at? <laughs> it's in the Bible. Where at? You tell them. I've never seen that before. You know what they just confess? They aren't studying their Bible. They aren't taught, uh, learning what the Bible says in their life. They're living their life by the flight of their wings. Wind blows north, they're going to go north. Wind blows south, they're going to go south. They don't care. Verse 22. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of the rams. 
Coming to church is all well and good, and I'm tickled to see everybody here. I really am. You know, when you fall down to about 19 people, and then there's 20 plus shows up, it just makes a bigger crowd. Makes it look fuller in this church. People can come up here and go to church, and then they go home feeling good about themselves. I fulfill my obligation to go to church today. What preacher to preach on? Well, he was in 1 Samuel somewhere. That's typical Baptist language, isn't it? I really don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to call names out here, but I asked some of the members of this church one Sunday, what did I preach on last night? Uh, uh. You know, it's not about me preaching, but it's about God speaking to your heart. Let me tell you how God spoke to my heart in services today. I made a challenge to the 19 that were here last week. Well, the 18 counting me as 19. Pastor don't really count. He's supposed to be here, right? I made a challenge. Does anybody that was here in those 19 remember the challenge I made? Because speak now or forever hold your peace. Christy said, I wasn't here. I can get out of this. But she watched it. <laughs> Sue wasn't able to be here. Huh? <laughs> you know what? I've made the challenge for people to go in social media and brag on what God had done for them. Huh? Who? What do you say, Susie? Bring somebody to church. You know what? Something bad happens. We'll load Facebook down with everything that's bad happened. And everybody's going to chime in and think how the other person's wrong and all that kind of stuff. I tell you right now, let me go ahead and tell you, there's too much garbage on Facebook and not enough Jesus. How are they going to get Jesus? If a Christian don't talk about how good God is or how he talked to their heart at church, how are they going to know what Jesus has done in your life? They don't see it. Oh, no. Brother Ronnie, how dare you speak like that? Or, we'll put one of them pictures, and there's some beautiful pictures with Bible scriptures on there. Talking about how good God is and all this kind of stuff, and two paragraphs down, you see them cursing and carrying on because somebody's offended them. Say it ain't so. And they call themselves Christians. God's trying to shut me up. Y'all hear that? That's twice. <laughs> it ain't God shutting me up. God will tell me when to shut up. We're almost done anyway. Notice that Saul's sin didn't just affect him. We talked about that. Notice Saul's respect. We've talked about that. But let's see what Samuel told Saul. Verse 23. For rebellion. Highlight that word in your Bible. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquities and idolatries. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord... He hath already rejected thee from being king. Did his sin affect him? Not only did he commit a sin, he lied about it and blamed somebody else. Anybody in here? Well, Richard hadn't told me to do that. I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> Richard, if Ronnie had told me to do that, I wouldn't have done that. I'm sure that was somewhere in our childhood. But you know, it's still today, we're always blaming somebody else. What did it say? Rebellion is just witchcraft. Now, is it telling you you're a witch if you rebel? No. Witchcraft is an abomination unto the Lord. So is rebellion. <laughs> Y'all like that, don't you? Let's hear a big amen if you like it. Oh, we didn't get too many of them. You know why we don't like it? Because it's truth. A preacher stands up here and preaches truth. He can't tell you that every time he reads something, he likes it. Because it hits us between the eyes just like it hits you between the eyes. 
But when we rebel against God, we still expect God to bless us. Let me tell you something. God sometimes does bless you, try to get your attention. When he gives you a blessing and says, here's a blessing for you, let's see if that'll get your attention. But you know, all too many often, all too often we rebel, guess what happened? He gives us that thing. He said, look, we did something. God blessed us for it. The calm before the storm. When God judges rebellion, he judges it, he judges it righteously. You look and read the rest of scripture and and uh, I'm going to read down verse 24 where in the back, back part he said, Because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Saul had been put in a position of leadership and he failed his leadership. I can't stand it. I don't care whether it's a Democrat or Republican. It's more so Democrats though, unfortunately. When they get on, I heard it this week. This is what the people want. And one of the guys took up TV and said, you can't speak for me because you don't have a clue what I want. Saul said, this is what the people want. They made me do it. He didn't do it once. He didn't do it twice. He didn't do it. Yeah, he did it three times, didn't he? He blamed them three different times to Samuel and said, it's the people's fault. And then on the fourth time, guess what he did? He finally, you read on further down, he finally acknowledged I've sinned before God. He got called out. Let me tell you something, people. I fear that our churches are not being revived because of rebellion on our part. It doesn't take but just a little, you know, I was talking about, John pointed this out, and I can't remember what it was, where it was I believe it was in Revelation, where he it was calling out sins, and one of them said, all liars. Revelation 21, 21.8. You can look over there and see what it says, but it, it, it calls out all the sins and it says all liars. And as John so rightly pointed out, it's not just the lie lies, the white lies too. All liars. It doesn't leave any of them out. See, Saul was lying to God. He was lying to Samuel. Samuel already knew. He, the difference between Samuel and Saul, Samuel was in connection with God. Saul was not. Now, he allowed Saul to be king at one time. I think Saul was probably in connection with God. But when there was authority came along, guess what? He let that authority go to his head, and he made decisions on his own, and he did things that God didn't want him to. And, and I believe he got cursed. He lost his kingship. I, I don't know what happened. I don't remember what happened after that. We do know that David was appointed the king of Israel and David ended up serving Saul as a servant and then he ended up being the king and, that, and it goes on from there. But let's talk about Saul. Saul, what did he give up for sin? He gave up a blessing from God. Liberty Chapel Baptist Church, we have given up blessings from God because we haven't served God the way we're supposed to. He point a finger at me, Brother Ronnie, and I'm pointing a finger at all of us. We haven't done it God's way sometimes. Just because it feels good or makes you feel better about yourself doesn't mean it's right. I'm guilty. If your pastor can't say he's been guilty of something, then I don't have, I don't have any expectation of you saying that you've been guilty. But see, you don't report to me anyway. You report to God. Just like I will. What does our lifestyle say about Jesus? What does our language say about Jesus? What does our faithfulness to God say about Jesus? You know, you can only judge yourself on that. I can only judge myself on that. I can tell you, as I saw my wife on that song come up here in the altar and start praying, I don't have a clue what she's praying about. She wants to share it with me, she'll share it with me. But guess what I did? I bowed my head and I said, Lord, I don't know what she's praying about, but let me thank you for who you are and bless her prayers. If somebody comes to this altar, your pastor says, unless y'all pull me down there to pray with you, Lord, I don't know what the God's dealing, what you're dealing with them about, but Father, 
If it's sin, let them repent of it. If it's something that they're wanting to get straight with you, Lord, help them to get there. You know why? Because your pastor wants to see you, see you be all that you can be for Christ. By the way, Army didn't come up with that slogan. God did. You know why I know? Because he wants us to be all we can be for him. Jesus asked the question, Will the Son of Man, when the Son of Man returneth, will he, shall he find faith? Is faith strong in your life? Or is it just a byword? You can say anything you want to and make many people believe it, but you can't always make God believe what you're saying. Because, see, he knows your heart. With well, a heart is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? God. You. You know down deep in your heart you're right with God or not. You know deep in your heart if you're saved or not. Saying a simple prayer, coming down here and talking to the preacher, saying a simple prayer and getting dunked in that water in there doesn't save you. True repentance. Turning away from sin and turning to God. Not an easy message to preach, but it's true. God laid it on my heart for a reason. And I'm praying God will deal with the people that he wants to deal with. Listen, and I just want to tell you, there's probably many of us that need to get our hearts right with God. You know, John comes back to bragging about how great a revival God put on at Liberty Chapel. He didn't brag about his preaching. He bragged about God. And how God had done something at that church. They started off with just a small crowd, and next thing he knows, he's got a church full of people from other churches coming in there to hear him preach. And God blessed in that revival, and he gave God all the praise. That's one thing I can tell you about him and Sue both. When God does something, they give God credit. We, when God does something in our life, do we give him credit to other people? Hey, let me tell you what God did in my life this week. Well, let me tell you, you know what? We get distracted by problems. I can speak for myself for the last three weeks. I've been distracted. I've been distracted. But you know what? God knows how to get our attention and we'll just listen to him. It's like I told John, you can't, get, you can't just make the burden go away. But you sure can get a close shot if you start looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of faith, and say, Lord, I need your help. I can't do this by myself. That's the problem. None of us think we can, can't do it by ourselves. We think we can. We're going to get ready for an invitation.